All right, can you guys hear me? Guys in the back, in the back row. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my name is, uh, okay, what we are, my name is Rajesh. Uh, I work with Pivotal and he's Brian. So we're going to do quick introduction. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, something that uh, we've been building for well over like a couple of months now. It's a testing framework. Uh, it started as a testing framework, but there are a lot of other stuff that we have built on top of it. So, uh, can quickly, uh, I am based out of Michigan and uh, I'm a platform architect. My day job is working with my folks in Pivot, <laughs> my Ford, uh, Ford Motor Company, that's my customer, uh, and I help them adopt Cloud Foundry. So, if, again, for folks who don't know, Ford is our, one of the biggest accounts for uh, Pivotal. And, Brian is based around Minneapolis. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I've been uh, working on with uh, quite a few companies in, in the Midwest area or so, and uh, so I've been able to help uh, demo and uh, show people a lot of uh, really cool things about Cloud Foundry, and which is what we're here talking about today, along with Node.js and all this stuff. All right, cool. So uh, so what we're going to introduce today is we call this project as XCLO. Uh, just an acronym we came across like yeah, last week. It's a <laughs> cross cloud monitoring and testing dashboard. So it's a dashboard that we've been building. So there are m multiple components in this dashboard. We're going to talk about uh, and do a lot of demo about that dashboard today. Uh, so going to the next slide, what are we trying to do? What is the problem we are trying to solve here? So again, just a uh, history of this project. This started. I would say around six months back, I was working with some teams in Ford. And Ford, as you know, it's a, it's a fairly big installation of Cloud Foundry, multiple foundations. And there's, with multiple foundations, we have multiple challenges. Like, hey, how do we update and make sure that apps are always running across, the same app is running across all platforms. If we update the underlying build packs, if you underline the, update the stem cell, uh, and all the service uh, gets updated. So those kind of challenges with, when you have large scale installations that you come across, uh, and then how do you provide a visibility to the, the engineering team, the ops team, and, the de and to the developers uh, across all these foundations. So with that premise, we said, okay, maybe we shouldn't step back and say, can we create uh, a, a cross-platform, a cross-foundation dashboard? At the same time, we also, can we pro provide some kind of a uh, testing framework so that we can push the same kind of apps across all these multiple foundations so that they can be, they can be running th uh, these apps constantly uh, to give that health of each of these foundations. So those were the two areas we started exploring. Uh, and with that premise, we like again said, okay, is this a problem that just Ford has or is this a problem like other customers have? And when I started talking to other customers, most of the bigger customers that we came across, they had similar problems. Like, hey, they all started doing similar things. Uh, so we, Brian and me, we kind of uh, paired together and said, okay, we should do something different. And that's where the genesis of this project is. So with that, uh, I'll hand it over to Brian. He'll actually walk through a story uh, and give a demo. Right. All right. So, uh, like every business, uh, some uh, some business owner comes up with some idea, and then you hire some developer, and start off the project. Uh, you generally, just kind of get a feel for things, start getting some stuff set up. Then you start hiring more developers, and why isn't the transitions building out? Uh, so you start hiring a few more people as you're going along. So your project gets bigger and bigger. And pretty soon, you have a whole bunch of developers. And then you uh, start building up a bunch of different apps, which at first seems pretty simple. Uh, you have five apps to deploy and manage. All right, no big deal. Uh, then you start uh, introducing Cloud Foundry, which makes running those microservices a lot easier for you. Uh, you have a lot of resiliency built into there, but still you have to, uh, you have the one foundation then to I have to monitor your apps, make sure everything's up and running. Uh, so you get everything all deployed there. And then, great, five apps, still real easy. Uh, you're no longer having to uh, worry about running these on like a local laptop or something like that to get the platform to actually manage everything for you. 
But wait, uh, you now probably have like say maybe a, a dev space, a test space, staging, prod, maybe a few other various spaces uh, for that one applicant for that one big A application. So now uh, you have four, or you have four spaces, five apps, and now you have 20, map, 20 apps you now have to monitor, uh, which depending on uh, who's monitoring that might get to be a little more uh, interesting because then they have to go into the various spaces, make sure every app is up and running. And then uh, once you start uh, worrying about somewhat of redundancy, maybe you want to have a couple Cloud Foundry foundations, uh, two, three, four, five foundations across the globe. Then all of a sudden you have uh, basically a microservice sprawl. So now you have uh, X many foundations times X many spaces times X many apps. That gets to be a lot of apps to monitor. In this case, say 40 apps now you have to monitor. So you have to log into, in this case, two different foundations across the few different spaces. That's like a full-time job for someone to just go through and just make sure everything's up every day. Uh, so some of the answers we want, or some of the questions we had going into this were, uh, how do I keep track of all my apps? Are they running? Should they be running? Because maybe you have uh, like a, a DR zone that's maybe supposed to be cold that you want to make sure that apps aren't running in, uh, along with uh, just knowing, so where, like uh, keeping track of all your apps, knowing where they're running, are my apps actually healthy or not? Because uh, maybe they're flapping, uh, going up and down, or maybe uh, the health checks are actually failing behind the scenes, but the app's still up. Maybe they can't connect up to a database or something. Uh, that kind of stuff is great for operations to build know, and right now is a little bit hard, especially when you start uh, talking about multiple Cloud Foundry foundations. Uh, so with that, we'll go to a quick demo of uh, what we've actually been working on. So here is, uh, right now I'm logged into one foundation. This is a, a quick little app that we've been working on uh, to be able to just go pull apps from every, every space within your foundries that you have uh, actually configured. So in this case, I have one foundry configured. I can actually go and uh, click on one of these apps and it'll actually go out and uh, Grab some more information about it. Figure out how many app, how many uh, instances of the application are actually supposed to be up and running, uh, what its memory limits are set to, what services are bound, when was last update, and such. That way, if, uh, just as a as an administrator, you can easily go and see uh, at a quick glance what's actually happening with that, that application. Along with if uh, it, right now we're checking like just a slash health endpoint to see if the application is actually up and running. And if it is, we actually display the status right here along with if an app is actually stopped in a stop state, it'll actually show up as a red little tile here. So uh, this is, so right now I'm logged into a single foundation. And if I go and log into a couple more foundations, uh, so these are right now are just a con just a configured in a little JSON file. Uh, we're eventually gonna do something else, we're not sure yet, but if I go back to apps, now this will actually go and pull apps across all those foundations that, we're, that I'm actually logged into. So then you can see in this case, uh, this, app, this application is, is actually currently stopped. Uh, so I'm not gonna be able to get too much for details on that. Uh, they, so we have a couple different apps that are stopped. We can also see what foundation they're actually a part of, what org and what space. Along with, we are also pulling in uh, some uh, concourse pipelines as well uh, that, we're, uh, that we're using for actually deploying some of these applications. So in this case, uh, we'll use one that we have set up for Ford, uh, since we have our four guys here. So if we go in here, we'll see that uh, we have uh, three different pipelines. If there is something currently going on in this pipeline, we would actually see, uh, similar to how concourse uh, has a little uh, rectangular thing around uh, whatever is currently happening. Uh, that'll show up, say, like right here or so in the app, or just in this little tile. And if there is something that was wrong, there would actually be a little red, red slice in there as well. So that's, I've, uh, we, are, we just started getting into the concourse part. We're still trying to flush out some of the details about that, but we're uh, very much new to how this is gonna work. So we've been constantly changing a lot of features in the last even week or so. We've we're working on this even today, right before this, so I was happy that everything was actually staying working. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, we can go. If you want to like flip back, I just turn the apps on like the screen. 
All right. Sure. We'll go and uh, go look at the apps again and see that everything is everything is green again. Uh, so this is very useful. Uh, we're, we think this concept is going to be very useful to be able to monitor across multiple foundations along with uh, we have a search, so if we want to say, just look at the Canary apps that we have deployed, we can easily just go through and search for that, along with I can just turn off other foundations and see just one foundation's worth. I can, I, I, we started thinking of other things that a person might want to filter on, such as maybe build packs, uh, see if apps are started, stop, stuff like that. But we're uh, still working on all the various permutations of uh, cool things that we can add to this. Yeah, so let, let me just actually take a pause here. Uh, Can you hear me? Okay. So uh, again, as to uh, add to what Brian was saying, you know, the basic UI. I mean, we are we are trying to build a minimalistic UI to get started. So things that we thought were important was like a search. So I should be able to search for the same app across, let's say, four different foundations, or I should be able to filter that by. Uh, give me all apps in a specific foundation or give me all apps which are let's say node apps or java apps uh, that are or maybe apps that are running redis service or rabbitmq service uh, those kind of filters are available uh, what we also would like to see actually as extension is uh, what additional things that you guys you know who are managing multiple foundries what do you guys think is important right uh, I, is it uh, filtering is it sorting searching uh, is it actually going against specific kind of profiles? Uh, any additional metrics? So what we're also doing is we are look, every app that we are de deploying, uh, uh, if they have a slash health endpoint, so we are querying the slash health endpoint. So if you go to uh, Canary Java, uh, and if you see on the details section, there is a status up. So it's basically, if it's a Spring Boot Actuator app, there's a slash health endpoint that automatically is added to it. Uh, if it's uh, not a Spring Boot and someone is deploying some uh, custom apps, we are actually, again, in case of Ford, we are telling all app developers to have a slash health endpoint. They can write some custom data on that endpoint, and we can show the, that kind of custom data, like whether the, stat, whether the app is really up or not up. Uh, and, you know, those are the ideas that we have, but we would like, you know, this kind of a community project, like, hey, what do you guys think was important for you guys uh, to s either see on your uh, panel or even the details page. All right, so, uh, you know, continuing on that uh, theme, you know, again, we are thinking about uh, Kubernetes, like Project Kubo was announced this week. Uh, should we look at Kubernetes clusters? Should we bring in Kubernetes as a cloud operator who was actually tasked with managing multiple cloud installations, just not PCF or Cloud Foundry, but you might have Docker Swarm. Uh, you might have Kubernetes. Uh, you might have even services marketplace. You might actually want to see, hey, what are my common services and plans across all my foundries, right? Uh, do I am I actually uh, having, uh, you know, let's say a gold plan for Redis uh, and some kind of a quota and usage or SIs number of SIs uh, across all foundries? So those are the ideas we are kind of thinking about. Again, most of this feedback is coming to us from our customers. So we would like to hear from you guys what, what do you guys want to uh, you know, see in this community dashboard. Other thing that we are looking at is uh, reports. Uh, and again, uh, working with Ford, uh, Ford is actually, uh, you know, do, Ford does a lot of uh, elaborate analysis on the usage of the platform, uh, like how many containers are deployed, how many uh, are active containers or active AIs, and how many are uh, inactive and how many of them are using let's say one gig and plus of memory and what is the gigabyte hour usage uh, and those kind of reports are then used for some chargeback model so we're thinking of let's pull all this data across all foundries by organization because uh, you know most of the customers we have seen they look at org as a business unit and that that might be useful to a mechanism to pull that data and give reports around uh, gigabyte hour usage on container. And then also capacity planning. Like let's say if you are looking at this, what should be additional IS capa capacity, like how many Diego cells I am running, or how many nodes I am running, or how many uh, HCDs or uh, go routers, or whatever those uh, uh, metrics that we are pulling, we can pull that and uh, give some additional capacity metrics. Again, the idea behind this uh, dashboard is, 
uh, you know, solving a problem of uh, scale. Like if you have multiple foundries, how can you bring all that data together? If you have one, yes, you can go to a, like an apps manager or an ops manager and you can get details about that. But if you have multiple and you have a distributed team, how you can bring all this data together? Uh, so this is uh, what we are trying to do. Uh, what we want is feedback, Q&A, questions. Uh, so this is our demo and talk track. <laughs> Feel free to ask questions now. Uh, so uh, the dashboard is the radiator dashboard, which, which Brian showed, right? And there's a test harness, which is basically running all the tests, the, the canary test. So there are multiple com components underneath that. We haven't talked about the architecture yet. So the dashboard is one microservice or one service, which is we are, we are deployed in, like it's built in Node.js and React. Uh, then we have proxies for Cloud Foundry, proxies for CI servers, different proxy backend servers. And then we have concourse pipelines running under uh, a separate project. So you have concourse, all your concourse pipelines which are actually running all these different apps. Uh, that's a se separate project. So there are multiple components in this. If you go to that Git repo that we just put it on, on, the, web, well, was on, the, first uh, on the first page, you will see all those different projects. Yeah? Correct. So that's a good question. So what we have we are doing is that the app could the the card in the middle can be down, right? And that that basically means that the app itself is down uh, in the stopped state. So we are looking at the state of the app, stopped, start, or basically uh, I don't know what's other state. Yeah, stop, certain stop, basically. Yeah. But then if you are looking at the health, the slash health endpoint, so the app might be running but it might not be able to connect to a backend service. In that case, the slash health endpoint would show you whether it is not able to connect to a database or connect to a Redis or whatever it could be. So there are two points uh, of failure. One is basically the app state itself, and the other is the slash health endpoint. Yeah, right, right now we're not actually color coding based off of if the application is started but unhealthy because it can't connect up to a database. Currently, we're not actually color coding the tile differently because of that. Uh, that's a feature thing. Only so much time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, and same is uh, with the you know with the pipelines. We are showing right now. Uh, you know, one of the things that again working with Ford, they wanted to know is the app might be actually a version of the app might be running, but then we are pushing a new version of the app, and that pipeline might have failed, right? Uh, so what what we want to show that on that screen is, uh, in fact, if you log out and log into let's say another team. I uh, can't do that right now. Oh, you can. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So if you if you can log out and log like if you log into another team or another, we can have multiple servers. So if you log into multiple other server, you can see that one of the pipelines is down, and that basically means the app might be the earlier version of the app might be running, but the newer version that you are pushing that pi that pipeline failed, right? So you, you can have multiple failure points. A new app cannot be deployed. A app that is an existing dev app might be stopped. Or an app might be running, but uh, the underlying service might be down. So, for me, it looks like more of like what we do normally, like synthetic check, right? Like Yeah, so I think uh, the genesis, as I said, the genesis was like when you do synthetic monitoring, you, are, you have an app, uh, like you, you are writing apps, custom apps, and you're doing synthetic monitoring against that, right? Uh, one of the things uh, the four teams were actually, they, you have multiple cloud foundries, and they were tasked with this, like when you deploy any new service or you change any underlying component, make sure that everything else, all the apps that are running on them, they are always running, right? They're always hot. So how do you solve that problem? So that's the reason we said, okay, we should come up with like list of 10, 20 use cases, which are kind of smoke tests, bundle them, and then deploy them in all foundry so that we are consistently testing the same apps in all these different foundries. So that was the, like the primary use case driving this particular dashboard. App teams took that and said, okay, this is, looks really nice. We should actually extend this use case. 
And can we write our own custom apps and have slash health endpoints, and then we can use the same thing, that we don't need a synthetic monitoring tool. Any other questions? Just one comment. I think in the, in the tile view, if you can just uh, display the summary on the tile itself, instead of having to display the information on the form clicking. Yeah, right, right now. Right now, we're doing it on click just because uh, there's just uh, some latency involved with doing that for every single one of them. Uh, we just haven't quite got to that kind of point yet. Uh, so it's, it was easier uh, both time-wise for us and uh, just request time to actually just go and click on it right now. But yeah, eventually I w we want to have a bit better summary just within the tile and then uh, be able to click on it to get like a more expanded summary. Or just have that be something you click on the tile and it actually expands or something like that. So we're still trying to figure out exactly how the UI should look for some of these things. But yeah, I, it, trying to make this so that it's uh, more you can just look and see what's happening, especially being able to pull me back maybe like a an application version or something like that and having this in the tile as a little card as well so that you can search for like say Canary Java or something like that and then you can see all the instances of it and you can, if you're returning back say like an application version or something like that or uh, commit hash or something like that, you can easily see that something's different between these two or three, four, five, however many you have. So we are, uh, that's a good question. We, uh, all these apps that we have built actually, they are all stateless. Like we, we don't, we are purposely not storing any data because if you want to get data, then you can always go to a, like an apps manager or ops manager or some and get some data, right? Uh, because if we are going to start storing like time series data, it's going to be too, too much of data and we are going to replicate that data. So I think we'll solve that problem like by saying, okay, if you need historical data, then you launch into from that app into a specific console for that app, maybe like an apps manager or something, uh, rather than actually trying to store data here and trying to replicate data. Uh, I mean, at, at till this point, we are like uh, consciously thinking of not storing data, uh, just pulling data and make, making it stateless. But at, at some point, we need to store some data, then we'll start thinking about what is the best solution to start uh, data. Yeah, we figured start, start simple and then go from there. <laughs> <laughs> And we also don't want to be another source of truth for data as well. Uh, we figure that most most all the data that we really need, we can pull from the Cloud Controller API pretty easily, along with uh, if we start pulling apps from, say, like Kubernetes or Docker Swarm or something like that, uh, trying to have a little more uniform interface for that uh, is kind of where we're trying to go for that. And if we could avoid having to store state uh, or any kind of state, that would be great. But obviously, at some point in time, we're going to want to be able to uh, store some little bits and pieces here, but we just haven't quite figured out what scope we want to actually store data at yet. All right, any other questions? So a um, couple of things we want to point out before we like wrap this up is uh, we want actually feedback, right? So there is like a feedback form. Uh, if you guys go and go back and submit some feedback and tell us what's important for you guys, uh, who are using Cloud Foundry, that would be very helpful for us to so prioritize things. And uh, yeah, if you need code, we'll, we'll send out the, the whole the source code of this repository and how to install this and how to start using it. And uh, we're, also, we're also putting the slides up on the schedule site thing as well, so I uh, look for that after this presentation. We should actually have the updated slides. We're, out, we're modifying the slides pretty much up until we got to the presentation, so <laughs> uh, the ones that are up there right now are a little bit stale. <laughs> it uh, should be updated soon after this then. All right. Thank you. Thank you.